What's up guys, welcome to another tutorial. Today I'm going to be continuing our uh, performance series. And as I said in the last one, I'm going to be talking about world composition. So for world composition, we're going to need a landscape. So I'm going to go ahead and going to just create a new level. I'm just going to go over here, file, new level. I'm going to use the default tab. And I'm just going to delete the platform and the player start because we're not going to need that. So let's go ahead into our landscape over here on the modes. Uh, here you have your landscape definitions, you can import uh, material, uh, like select the material. I'm not going to do that, there's no really need for this um, tutorial. This is the size or like the, the details of your landscape. Just to make it bigger, I'm going to go and in, go into 127 watts. So that's fine. I'm going to go into the camera speed and make it really fast. So I can, you know, zoom out easy. So this is your landscape size. I'm going to go ahead and click on create. And what I'm going to do, first of all, I'm going to have to introduce you to a new level tab. So I already have this levels tab over here opened. I'm going to go ahead and close that. And the way that you open that is window and find your levels tab that is over here. Then you can dock it uh, whatever else you want this. So this is going to be your persistent level. Your persistent, uh, your persistent level um, is something that is, is the root of every sub-level in your game. On your in your current master level or persistent level, and it's gonna always all like stuff that won't really need a lot of you know subdivision. So like your light source and stuff like that can be on the persistent level. But I'm gonna go ahead and right click, and you're gonna see that we have. Actually, it's not here. Okay, let's go into levels, and create a new. There you go. That's what I want. Uh, create a new map. This is going to be creating a sub-level to this persistent level. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder and I'm going to call this sub-levels. So I'm going to use that to hold this. I'm just going to call it new map 1, it's fine. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. Now you can see that this in the hierarchy is going to be uh, under the persistent level. And now, well, I want my landscape to be part of the new map uh, that we just created, the sub-level. So I'm going to go ahead into our uh, into our um, sorry, our world outliner. I'm going to click on the landscape. And I'm going to go over here. I'm going to right click on the new map one, and there is an option that is move selected actors to level, and it's going to tell you well uh, it's too much for your you know uh, clipboard. You can click ahead and say yes. It might freeze a little bit, but you know it should be fast enough. Now uh, for you, how do I know that this is part of the new level map? Well, this little eye can toggle the visibility of individual sub-levels so it's easier you know to if you're creating just on the part of a sub-level you can hide the other ones so if you go ahead and hide this you can see the landscape gets hidden but well this isn't really as anything to do with world um, composition because you know it's just a way of organizing your maps so uh, for this to work we're going to have to go ahead and go into our world settings and there is an option here on the world if you don't have your world settings uh, again you can go into window World settings and it will open up the tab. Enable world composition and level has to be saved and stuff like that. So it's going to give you a warning. Please save your level to this before enabling because I created our uh, persistent level but I didn't save it. So I'm going to double click it to make it uh, the active one. You can see the active one down here. I'm going to go ahead and click on, uh, click on save current. I'm going to go into maps and I'm going to just save and call it new map. New map already exists. I'm going to create yes. And there you go. Now if you go ahead into the world settings again, and we can successfully enable that. Oh, okay. Um, I forgot this, but actually it's fine. So you can see the error for yourselves. And I can actually explain it. World composition cannot be enabled because there are already sub-levels manually added. Uh, because world composition uses auto-discovery, so must first remove any manual added sub-levels. That's just a thing of the tool that you, you can't have any sub-levels on your persistent level. So just go ahead and delete that. You can go ahead and, you know, delete it. It's fine. Go into world settings and enable that. Now, uh, by scanning the low... Okay, world composition auto discover sub-levels by scanning the folder in the level. You save them. No sub-folders. For level files were found in game third person maps. We have the sub-levels. Do you want to continue? When I click OK, but uh, I actually doesn't, don't want this, uh, except the new map. So I'm going to go ahead and part one. And I'm going to... Uh, I don't know if we can do that, actually. 
well I should be able to remove them from the list but actually as you can see they are graded out so they're not loaded in uh, for levels that are not loaded in yet you can right click and say load and they will load in and now you're going to be able to add stuff to it so I'm going to do double click on the new map one and I'm going to have to create the landscape again so again 127 quads on the landscape and say create and all of this stuff but uh, where is role composition it's not really this so role composition is a tool in southern Merlin Gen 4 that lets you handle um, basically uh, basically it makes you easier to add new landscapes but it also creates lots for those landscapes and you can set up a, st a streaming level so like uh, parts of the landscape get even uh, if you are too far away so it increases performance the tool is this thing right here uh, this little icon the one to the right uh, next to levels you can click that and it's going to open a new HUD I'm using the the mouse wheel to zoom out this little um, uh, square here is your current landscape this little arrow is your camera view so if I move around you can see the arrow changes and yeah you can move around by holding your right mouse button and all them you can spin around so this is like a, li a little head where you can set up world composition and if I click on this new map and I drag it around uh, you can actually not see because my Unreal Engine crashed Th no that's great for fuck's sake okay so I'm back at where I was sorry about that uh, I don't know why it crashed but now you can see that when you move your little landscape over here on the HUD you can see it moves uh, and you can move your landscape having a bigger picture when you have a lot of them and you can move them around like this it's really simple I'm gonna leave them in the middle though but now how do you add uh, new landscapes now if you go over here go into landscape you probably can add new landscapes but you if you do that when you're painting or sculpting the landscapes are gonna when you reach the edge over here uh, oh let me set the, 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 the speed because when you actually paint the landscapes if you create them from over here this is going to discontinue and it's going to be a pain in the ass for you to level out because it's going to be like two different meshes um, but if you do it inside this HUD on the world composition tab you can actually right click on the landscape now we have a couple of options and you can go back to add agents the landscape level and you can choose a direction you have the little arrows I'm going to add one to the right and you're going to need to you know give it a name i'm going to so uh, click on sub levels i'm going to call it new map 2 and save and now you can see that you can move these around and you know just snap them together now if you go ahead and see you have your two landscapes and if i go into landscape and sculpt and make the tool with the brush size big enough you can see that you can actually paint on and like the landscape will be continued to one another and you, you're not going to have any difference uh, over here and you can actually go ahead and you know separate them separate them uh, sorry separate them and th this will happen but you know just best if you connect them back together and you can work back so it's really easy um, but this hasn't really as much to do with performance now if I show you something let me minimize this I'm going to try and get far away from this landscape and you can start to see that is like when we did on our static mesh editor and we add the lots the level um, or the mesh start to, starts to lose detail when you activate world composition look what happens to your landscape they start to forming and lose polygons on the screen so it increases your performance as you get closer to it now this really only applies to really large landscapes because the one that we got is fairly small and you can see like I have like no performance issues at all with this but if you have a really open world area this will make a big difference so make sure to use this tool and another thing is I'm not sure if I play here there you go okay, the landscape is actually too small for this to matter let me go back here I think it is too small if I'm not mistaken yeah it is but you know it has his log over here in the mountains you can't really tell but he probably lost detail um, because you know it's the the lot system but if the landscape was really big you'd see that this part of the landscape will kind of pop out so let me just go ahead and flatten this terrain 
so I don't see any mountains during the middle. Let me put my tool strength to max, so it doesn't take much effort to do this. There you go. Do this. I'm actually going to create some mountains over here. I'm gonna go into and go into sculpt it back. Go. Let me create some. What is happening? Why are you snapping? Okay, this is the the bug that I got sometimes in engine. I think this only happens to me when I'm recording. I'm I don't know why this happened. Maybe it's because of Bandicam. I'm not sure. But you know, you have some mountains over here, uh, down on the range. You can go ahead and see that they lose detail over distance. But if I play from over here and it's perfect, you see that most of the mountain disappeared. That's because of the streaming distance inside our world composition menu. That is over up here. On on control side, you can see that streaming distance is 50,000. If you create a new layer, you can give it a new streaming distance. So I'm going to say the streaming distance is, let me say, 200,000. There you go. And just click Create. I'm going to call it My Layer. But now you need to click on both of these landscapes. Uh, you can hold Shift and click to select them both. Right click. Assign to layer, and you can uh, use your layers so you have different streaming distances for each part of the landscape. So imagine that there is like um, a, a part of your landscape that is a lot of mountains. You might want to have a streaming distance uh, big because you know you can see through a mountain, so it doesn't really matter if the other mountain behind is there or not. But if you have like uh, hills or like uh, not much elevated spaces that you can see a lot from afar, you want a, a bigger streaming distance because the player is going to want to see uh, further into the distance. So if I add this to my layer, and you can see that my layer has the streaming this off to 100,000, and now you uh, minimize, if I play from here, you can see that you can see the mountains. So that's how we do, um, basically, how to hide parts of the landscape. Now this only really comes to mind uh, in performance, if you have like a really big landscape, like with uh, like a landscape this big from over here. By the way, this little square over here is the limits um, Oh, not this square. I don't know where it is. I don't know why is this square up here, but okay. This square is basically the size of your, uh, the max capacity of Unreal. So imagine a world map of this size. You actually can go further than this, but you need to activate this feature that I don't really understand yet. I might do a video on it if I do search more into it. But you can go further than this, but like no game has a map bigger than this square. Uh, no game, I believe. I, I don't think so. But you imagine that you have a map of this size. With this system, like having these little squares of landscape and every single one of them with their own streaming distance and each one of them is going to have their, their auto lots that Unreal does when you go further away and they kind of start losing detail. This stuff all always account into the performance. Now if you do this and like just create the normal landscape from over here, you're not going to get uh, the streaming distance or anything the, the entire landscape is going to be loaded in at the same time. That's just too much for a, a RAM to render. So this is much better. Now if I add the speed to actually go, you can see the size of this landscape already and it's so small compared to the, the capacity of Unreal. It's really crazy. And now if you have like a really big one, you could see, you can test this out on your own. But yeah, this is everything that I think World Composition can do. Of course, you can go ahead and add more adjacent landscapes. You can uh, test around with the distance. So if you, if I'm not clear enough, the the streaming distance is basically the little the streaming distance is, um, the more closer you have to be uh, to that part of the landscape for it to load in, and the further it is the value, uh, the further away you're gonna see it. So hopefully that makes sense. And just a little bit of a design, um, a little bit of game level design basically. Uh, just tip. If you have stuff like this, like big landscapes where you have to see really far, like you don't have anything blocking your vision to those mountains, but you don't want them uh, like to stream so far because of performance, you want them to be hidden from here, you can like use um, things like fog or anything, or like uh, environmental, like big trees or something that block the player's vision and don't allow them to see. So when you walk forward to it, I can actually uh, give you that. So I'm going to go ahead and go into my world composition. I'm going to click on both of these squares again. Alt shift and click them. I'm going to move them to the other layer and characterize so we get the 50,000. 
And I'm gonna go and modify my third person character really quick. So I'm gonna go into my max walk speed, click on your character uh, component, and go back here. There is a max walk speed around here, 600. I'm gonna change this to something really crazy like 60,000. It's really gonna fly. So I'm gonna play. Now I'm gonna start. Uh, okay, wait, what? Okay, so you see that pop over there? That's because the, the like the that little square of landscape just loaded at twenty thousand streaming distance, so we're getting twenty thousand pixels closer to that landscape or units, and when we do that, it appears. So this really looks bad in bad in a real game. So if you use fog or like any other things to block the player vision, you can have this happening without the player noticing, and like. In a big landscape, doing this, uh, every piece of the landscape has its own um, love or like if you want to call it piece that can uh, go hidden. Uh, like th like the level streaming, you have like uh, your houses uh, like not loaded in, and you, when you open the door, it, they load them. So you can have like caves or something to transition to the next part of the level. You know, you can do a lot of stuff to hit this. It's like really your choice, but I'm just showing you where what you can do, and. If I go close to them, you can see the by the distance that I go, they start gaining more, more and more detail. Probably can really notice because landscape laws are really good. But you can see now really up close, you know, everything works fine, collision and stuff. And you can see that little eels there are still there. But now if I go back and, you know, go further away, they're going to pop back again. And the other piece of terrain, you can see that happening here, is going to pop in at 20,000 uh, streaming distance and now when I got oh what the hell happened wait what okay this loaded in for some reason okay sorry about that oh okay that's because it's over here and it gets loaded in when I play sorry about that okay but you probably not gonna have these here um, So yeah, that's everything I think that I want to show. Uh, you can use the system as I explained to, uh, you know, when you want to create a new landscape, don't do it here, do it here. And instead of creating a really big one, create smaller ones, but in squares and like little pieces. And just go over here and add adjacent landscapes and you can create a really well optimized landscape if you want a big one. That mixed with lots and level streaming can make your game super, super optimized. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this, I'm gonna save. If you guys have any doubts or you know want me to do something specific for the series, let me know in the comments. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye bye.